Hi booktube and happy Friday. We have made it through yet another week. Somehow we did it. <laughs> um, I have finished work and I went out and about on some very brief errands. I didn't even need to grocery shop this week, which is a win. I have plenty to get me through. So I try to do that. I try to just grocery shop every two weeks because I it's not my favorite thing. Not because I don't like the food shopping part, but the crowds. I don't I don't enjoy that. Um, but when I was out in the pot, it, it was nice and sunny for just a brief, brief <laughs> period of time. And now it's back to getting cloudier and cloudier and it's been raining and cloudy all week. And then this weekend too, it's going to be rainy. So that leads me to say, as like, I feel as my per usual, <laughs> I feel like these last couple weekends where I'm just staying in all weekend. Um, I have some baking plans. I have some cinnamon rolls actually, uh, working, uh, to proof up. To bake and I'm just doing lots of reading and that's that's just my <laughs> my plans uh, which is I feel like just just what I need right now I don't need to be out and about because yeah, there's just there's just so much going on <laughs> in my head and in the world and I just want to relax and, and just sit here and uh enjoy myself the best I can so it all of that to say um that's like basically my uh what I've been up to this week I haven't done, done anything <laughs> except work and read and keep the house clean and I feel like that's that's just sufficient for now. Um, so I wanted to do a check-in um, and use the Friday reads as a check-in on how I'm doing on the 100 book challenge where I am reading or in my case reading slash um, getting rid of or unhauling books to go towards the 100 book challenge and um, I am on I can't exactly remember I'm on like week three or four of this challenge. I know it started um, later than I did, but because um, I, 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 as I mentioned before, I when I started this challenge, I was using it as a personal challenge to myself because I didn't know that the hundred book official challenge was coming back this year. So I started like a week or two earlier than the official start date, which was in November, and I started at the end of October. But anyway, um, I wanted to use the Friday reads to sit down and share with you the books I've read and unhauled this week, and then the books I'm currently reading. Um, so let's go into, we'll start with the books I'm unhauling because let's just, you know, reverse things a little bit and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not being like too negative about these books, just books that just weren't for me or, or what have you for one reason or another. Um, so this one, I really, really like the cover, uh, My Wilderness East to Katahdin by William O. Douglas. I have two other books by this author, but I read a good fourth, a third of this and it's, while it does talk about, you know, the nature and um, his like treks out and about, it's too much focused on the nitty gritty, like scientific. Like I like the specific nitty gritty, <laughs> don't get me wrong, but it's too much scientific terms in here. Like the, the botany of, of the plants and the animals and it's, it, it takes me out and it's not, it's basically like this is not a narrative uh, nonfiction book and, and I do like it to be more like a more like a story I can do scientific and I have a, a book I'm currently reading right now it's very scientific but it has to flow and this just for some reason didn't but I do have two other books um from William O. Douglas that I plan to read and hopefully they'll be a little bit better I actually went to my shelf after DNFing this one you know not finishing it and I made sure like can I read the other two and I, I think I'll get along better with those than this one but I do I like the raccoon it's just it's just so cute. There's, um, there is, uh, I, I live in an apartment complex and there's one apartment that's constantly leaving out food for the raccoons. The, the, their apartment faces like the forest area. And so when I'm walking at night at rounding that corner, half the time, because I'm with my dog, <laughs> and half the time we startle these raccoons that are just like running up the staircase and like down into the forest. And so I see them <laughs> on a regular basis. Uh, okay. So, uh, Mountain Voices, A Legacy of the Blue Ridge and Great Smokies by Warren Moore. I, I'm not going to go, again, not too much in depth on these books I'm getting rid of because I didn't read them. This one, I skimmed it and I looked through the pictures. Um, there is some colored, there's lots of black and white, but there is some colored photos in the middle here. And this, the reason I decided not to push on and read this is because it's too broken up. When it says like the mountain, um, the mountain voices, it's like a paragraph or two. So on one page, um, for example, and some aren't like this. Some there are, you know, uh, more columns of, of of a story. But there, it's just like each little paragraph is a different story, a different person's, you know, voice. And so it, it's too choppy for me. 
um because i am interested in this subject um but just not not in this format um so yeah there, i did look through the pictures and i did scan it and you know you do have like the people um that are there um so yeah this one i'm gonna be you know it's gonna go to a, a home that'll appreciate it more um okay no bad dogs the woodhouse way by barbara woodhouse I had mentioned when I picked this um, book off my shelf that um, I had been looking forward to reading this because it's a book I had on my TBR for quite a while. But no, that's not the case. <laughs> like when I looked through this, this is not the book I thought it was. I must have been thinking of a different different author, maybe a similar title. I'm not sure. But this is a manual for training dogs. And um, there's like choke chains and stuff in here. And I'm just like, Meh. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, so this this is not what I thought it was. Uh, Down the Volga, A Journey Through Mother Russia in a Time of Troubles by Mark de Villiers. The writing in this one, it, it didn't, uh, it didn't give me what I needed, <laughs> basically. I, I Again, another subject I'm interested in. The Volga is like basically the Mississippi um, for North America um, and it's in Russia. Um, but yeah, it's just not the story I, I want um, about that topic. And then three books I didn't try to read at all that I'm just going to be getting rid of. Uh, Waiting for the Party, The Life of Francis, Francis Hodgins Burnett. Um, she wrote The Secret Garden and A Little Princess and several other books. And I read and loved all of those books. But um, I'm just, I, this book has been on my shelf for years. And I'm just not interested in reading a biography of her. She might have lived an interesting life. I don't know. But I feel like if I wanted to know about her life, I would you know, read her Wikipedia page. Something like that. I don't need a full full book on her. And then um, two other books uh, on an author, The Selected Letters of Wallace Segner. And I have um, an interview, Wallace Segner in the West, the American West by Philip L. Fradkin. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't need these two books. I, <laughs> I've had this on my shelf for quite a while. Um, I've read Wallace Segner's works, most of them. And I've read a biography and I recently read a triology, I don't even know, where it's like a memoir, a biography of Wallace Segner and a biography of um, Edward Abbey all wrapped into one <laughs> so I, I feel like that's sufficient I don't need I don't need more so I'm getting rid of these two so those are the books I am unhauling and then so I seven of those and then I have 13 books I've read this last week um, so Little Author in the Big Woods a biography of Laura Ingalls Wilder by Yana Zeldis McDonoghue and this is um, I, I really like the cover and it's like a it's a children's biography of Laura Ingalls Wilder so it follows you know, the um, story we all know with Laura Ingalls Wilder Little House on the Prairie series, but it also, you know, fills in the gaps and covers, you know, her um, her adult life. And so this also includes some um, black and white sketches as well, um, which I think were interesting uh, to look at comparing, uh, like, the, uh, you know, the official Little House on the Prairie illustrations compared to this one. Uh, it was interesting to see. It's illustrated by Jennifer Thur Thurmans? Thurms? Um... But anyway, I, as much as I like the cover, the story, and this, is, this is more of like a biography written for children. There was several um, mistakes in here. <laughs> like I read so many biographies of Laura Ingalls Wilder that I, I don't know, I was able to catch several of them. And, but yeah, I, I did like the story enough for, for a child, but I think this is a book I've read and I think I might get rid of it. I don't know. I like the cover, <laughs> but and, and the story was uh, told well enough, but there were the mistakes for <laughs> were a, a, a bit too glaringly obvious um let's see Wapiti Wapiti Wilderness by Margaret and Olaf Murray um and they were two uh both like um Margaret she was a writer she wrote this book and two in the far north and then her husband was a um, Olaf was a biologist and he wrote his own books and, and he does all the illustrations in here and then his brother Adolf um, wrote some of like the famous books I feel like on bears and wolves in Alaska because he was a biologist in, a, in and of itself and each story in here is told either from Margaret or Erlos and it's their journey from living in Alaska um and they were like they, they toured all of Alaska I feel like on their adventures by themselves way out in the middle of nowhere and then they um Olas got a job um in the Jackson Hole area of Wyoming in the Teton area near Yellowstone and so this is like way back before it was you know the booming popular place that it is now it was still getting popular like as they're continuing like you know through the decades as they're living there but I, mean, I can only imagine what they would think of it now <laughs> compared to back then but it's just 
it's just a, a lovely story to read like you know, what Jackson whole or you know Jackson felt like way back then and uh, like the nature and all of that just like combination was was just fascinating uh, to read and let's see if I can find um, there's some illustrations sprinkled throughout here done by Olus is the big horn sheep and there's elk the elk is what the wap pity is like the original name for them are called and I kind of, I know I'm butchering that but this is I'm finally I'm happy to finally be getting to this one because this is the book I've owned at least for a year and I, I don't know why, why I have held off from reading it because I really like uh, Margaret's writing this is a silly book that I had on my shelves biblioholism the literary addiction by Tom Rabb this I didn't get on with so much like at first it was funny because it's told in a very jokingly joking manner um and it's supposed to be humorous but it just wore on me I did read the entire thing but it's all about you know the love of books and how we can accumulate so many books and how um you know that can cause problems and there's different like diagnoses for bookish issues um you know buying too many books or spending so much time in a bookstore you know things different things like that but um yeah I just it just wore on me after a while uh, so <laughs> at least I read it and it's off my shelf now uh let's see the good old days they were terrible by Otto L Bettman this is another book that was trying at times because it was so negative <laughs> Like, there was not a hint of light in any of these topics. And it covered the gamut. So, it's like, um, back in the olden days, like, you know, 1800s, you know, the working conditions, which I know, you know, were bad. You know, there was children working in them, um, you know, no insurance, no fun. You know, if you got hurt on the job, nothing like, there's no help at all. But, um, and even talk about, like, the rural life, like, how, like, it was horrible there, too. And, I mean, yes, it was. But, like, there, there are some glimmers of hope here. <laughs> You know we did progress on to where we are now and there you know there's the way i like there's tons and tons of like newspaper clippings with little descriptions on them um so i'll just i'll just read you one for example just one randomly um this is for townhouses it says kerosene replacing replaces whale oil i cannot talk <laughs> whale oil as illuminant proved explosive as gunpowder in 1880 39% of all New York fires were caused by defective lamps. So it's like, even like the little blurbs are, <laughs> we're just negative, every single thing. Um, so I'm like, I, I feel like this author wants to, you know, have a balance to things. You know, the good old days weren't great and wonderful, but they also weren't terrible all the time. They weren't wonderful all the time. I feel like there should have been a, a, a middle middle road, but, but there wasn't. It was all, every single thing was negative. And that was hard <laughs> to read this week, uh, to say the least. Uh, let's see. Gary Paulson, Clabber Dirt, Sweetgrass, and with paintings by his wife, Ruth White, Wright Paulson. And this was interesting because I didn't know much about it going in. I had just, like, the, um, end papers are just the author biography. And then this very simple sentence saying, a lyrical tribute to a vanishing way of life. Never before has such a farm story been told. So that's all I knew about it. And this is, because I feel like I've, I've read several of Gary Pawson's nonfiction books. And several of them have talked about his upbringing as a child. And then when he lived on a farm with his um, relatives. And so I knew part of his, that story. I knew how much he had enjoyed it and all of that. Uh, but this focused solely on that farming lifestyle. But told in a different way than his previous memoirs had been. Uh, this is, like you was saying, it's very lyrical and it's supposed to like kind of like take a, take a step back and it's not so personal with him but it's like you know giving you a feel for what it was back in that in those days living in rural northern minnesota um and living with those people like you know, kind of like put yourself in his shoes kind of thing because it's not so, told so closely because he's like it's like the whole lyrical writing is, is yeah giving you that step back um but yeah and there, the paintings are sprinkled in here uh from his wife and so let me see. And they're colored uh, pictures as well. I think they said they're oil, oil paintings. Uh, let me see if I can find another one. Um, so they're just little like farming equipment and different animals and um, things for the horses. So this is a very quiet uh, book. Uh, Down on the Tree Farm by Florence Hardsty. And this is about a woman who she didn't grow up on a farm but um she was working as a nurse in the cities on the east coast and then 
was random, randomly decided, like, I, I want to try something different. And so she put applications out for being a nurse in all over the country and ended up in Portland, Oregon, here where I live. And then she uh, met her husband, because um, she was like, 50, I think, 50 at the time, and he was 45, met her husband, who was, he owned a tree farm, um, he, <laughs> like, south of here. And so she, she, you know, met him, married him, and she commuted 50 miles one way, I think it was 50 miles one way to work because she was so dedicated to her job because at that time she was like leading like a nurse nursing department um, where she was working. And so she didn't want to give that up. So for, so for years, she commuted 50 miles one way, um, but happily living on the tree farm as well. But similar to um, that other book on how rural wasn't the, <laughs> the best, uh, wasn't all the end all be all kind of thing because she talks about how the um, neighbors around her, her, there was one that, um, had dairy uh, cows and so the smell from that when the wind shifted or different like sp different plants that were being sprayed on other farms where would drift over and so it wasn't all you know buttercups and roses <laughs> she was like, constantly uh getting interfered with all these like bad stenches basically even though it was like it was very pict picturesque and pretty so that was interesting uh of wolves and men by barry holstom lopez i'm happy to have read this one i've owned it for at least a year, maybe two. And but Lopez, Mary Lopez is an author I've wanted to read more from because I've only read a handful of books. Um, Arctic Dreams and Horizon, I think were the two. Maybe a third one about the water. I can't remember. But but of Wolves and Men, I feel like it's his like showpiece, <laughs> like the one I should have read first before any of the others. And this goes about all covers all aspects of the wolf. And so you have, um, there's one really cool one uh, showing, yeah, this one, where it shows the footprint, the paw print of the wolf. And look how, how huge it is. It's, it's just ginormous compared to a dog. Like I, I feel like my dog Fable, she's, she's 85 pounds and she has really distinct big paw prints, but the wolf um, <laughs> for sure, for sure is bigger. Uh, but this covers um, all like the biology and the habits and mannerisms, the social aspect of wolves. And talks about the human interactions, good or bad, you know, liking them or hunting them, killing them, all sorts of things. And then it talks about the history of the wolves, the history of it, um, the history of like um, people's interpretation of wolf, wolves. That was my least favorite part because when I go into books like this, I'm going into into it for the nature and the biology, not so much the folk tales and folklore around them. Um, that just doesn't hold my interest. So that was the, the least interesting part of this, but the majority of it, I, I, I did um, really appreciate. Uh, Rachel Carson, The Sense of Wonder, and it, there's photographs by Nick Kelsch. And this is a story that Rachel Carson had wrote and then wanted to embellish on it and make it its own uh, book, but she died before that could happen. And so they decided to make um, the this essay, basically, um, its own own book after she had died, and they're, they're the photographs, um, I'll show you, are really pretty. They're, they're, they're um, almost like every page has some kind of beautiful um, uh, picture in here. But this is all about getting children interested in, in nature and how to go about doing that and like, you know, sparking their interest. And here she is, right here. Um, and yeah, it's all about, you know, creating the love of nature without, like, um, putting too much restrictions on children. It kind of, it really reminded me of getting children interested in reading and, you know, like, making, you know, drilling it into them with these assign, assigned readings and things and, like, them getting, becoming more and more disinterested, I feel like, through, all the way through high school. Really, it, it hurts them more than it helps um, even though I understand there's a curriculum and all of that. So, the same kind of thing applies with nature and you know, talk about the botany and things like that I was just talking about earlier. Um, having them explore and following in their interest uh, is really what uh, Rachel Carson was championing for. And it really, it goes into like her, talking about her, she's most famous for Silent Spring. And I feel like with her, you know, it's, it's good in general for kids to be interested in science. But I think part of it is, you know, leading on to her Silent Spring book about how if people are interested in nature and the environment and what's going on with the earth and the ground and things like that, then there's more chance of them wanting to, you know, help save the environment. I think maybe, that's how my, that's just my interpretation of it. 
Okay, um, I wrote of her own Women's Journeys in the West, edited by Marlene Blessing, and she has a, a, a essay in here as well as many different authors. This was more of a miss for me than anything. Um, I read all the stories, um, but they, like, th they were told, this came out in the 1970s, I think, or most of the stories took place in the 70s, um, 2002. Um, let me see here. But yeah, I feel like most of the stories were told in the um, 70s and, and 80s. Um, but it's, it's women's, uh, like, I don't know. It's like, the, it's w when they're going into these small towns and like encountering these like horrible men who are, who are sexist against the women. Things, I'm, those kind of stories stuck out in my mind. But just overall, the, the tone, I think it's just the tone of the stories themselves. It wasn't much about the nature or living on the land which was what I thought it would be it's much more about their lives in these towns in the west if that that makes sense I mean so it, yeah this just didn't this didn't provide what I assumed it, it would kind of, I guess that's how I would say it um Bill Caldwell main magic I had previously read that listed here his other book um, maybe, maybe the other book came before this one, but it, he had another book on Maine that I, I really liked. This one, like, I, I guess, I don't know, this one felt disjointed as well. Um, there, each story was like a page or two or three, and it's all about raving, just absolutely raving about how much he loves Maine, which I can understand. Never been there, but I've always wanted to go there. But um, just Maine could do no wrong. <laughs> like it's it's exact opposite of that other book. Uh, this one, where this is all negative, this is all a hundred percent a plus positive <laughs> on every single aspect. And um, yeah, it just it, I don't know it, it being so so quick and brief and and um, almost repetitive. I guess with the with these raving reviews, it it took me out of the book and I didn't enjoy it as much. Uh, Gladys Tabor, uh, Still Meadow album, and with the photographs by Jockus Jocks Shepherd. Um, this is um, just um, Gladys Tabor, um, her describing her house. <laughs> so it's basically what it is. And so because I've read several of Gladys Tabor's uh, Still Meadow books, and so um, she, also, she talks about the nature around it, and Still Meadow is like a focus of her a lot of her books. And so, you know, she's just giving us, like, a a tour of the town. I mean, not of the town, of our house. I wish they were in color um, so you could see it better. Uh, you know, I could see it better, too. <laughs> but this was just, um, it, it wasn't substantial enough, I feel like, for me to keep this problem. I'm probably going to end up getting rid of it. But happy to, you know, have seen the photographs and, and know what exactly what it looks like when I read more of her books. Just a couple more that I've read since I last talked to you. I, I've been busy reading, <laughs> as you can tell. Uh, the Grassmere Journals by Dorothy Wordsworth, edited by Pamela Wolf. Um, this is a diary that was mentioned um, in the last diary collection. I had read A Book of One's Own. Was that the name of it? And so I, I had this book on my shelf. I, and this, was, um, this author was featured in that. I thought, oh, perfect. I can, I can get to it. Um, and she is the sister of um you know the Wordsworth family and um the, the poet but and this is uh, taking place uh, in Yorkshire in May of 1800 um it starts there and it goes on for three years but if I if I knew more about the poets I feel like I would have liked this more um she's like her brothers are famous but she herself is very much you know in the background and, and happ happily so um, which was nice and quaint to read about her. Just this is just her going about her her day to day life, and she's collecting it for her brothers who are missing out when they were away. And um, so there's that, but it just got monotonous after a while, and it didn't hold my interest to find those nuggets of of interesting pieces about the brothers because I don't know much about <laughs> about the poets. Uh, so it, it was just okay for me. And then the last book I've finished is um, another little house book, a little house guide book by William Anderson. And this is a, like a same as a Gladys Tabor, just um, talking about what the different um, places look like featured in the little house series. And so this is another book I'm, I'm probably not going to end up, I'm probably not going to keep. Um, so yeah, those are the books I've read. And so that actually finishes the, um, 
was it the last video? I think the previous video where I was selecting books off my shelf. Um, and I was taking it along with me and picking one book off each of my shelves. Um, so that finishes that whole TBR. And so now, um, along with, I, I'm, I'm still in the middle of uh, several books that were on this TBR, but uh, what I've decided to do next, since I still have a whole half of the month left to go, um, and I'm reading books for nonfiction in November, is to read um, like an A through Z challenge to myself. Um, so the last letter of each person's um, name. And I don't know if I have all of the letters. <laughs> I don't know if I have the entire alphabet on my shelves here for nonfiction books, but I'm going to try. And like, if I, if I don't have one, I'll skip on to the next letter. But I thought it'd be another way to like, you know, keep, keep knocking books off my shelf, you know, reading books off my shelf, but also doing it in a, in a, in a fun, interesting way. And, and that, that way I get to pick books that, you know, might just sit here. So that it gives me a shove. Like if, for example, if I get the letter H, and I only have one book, you know, who's to say I would have picked that up if it wasn't for this, this prompt kind of thing. So that's it's just a nudge to, to pick, pick books off my shelf that have been sitting here. So the books I'm currently reading, I'm going to be reading through this weekend is a book on seeds. Um, I mentioned this before, The Triumph of Seeds by Thor Hansen. And the subtitle is How Grains, Nuts, Kernels, Pulses, and Pips Conquered the Plant Kingdom and Shaped Human History. I am, let me see, like that much in. And you know, the last little bit here will be notes, but um, may, maybe a fourth in. Um, and this is a book, one of the oldest books on my shelf when I had done that challenge back in September, I think, when I was looking um, back on my old book haul videos to see. And so now I'm finally, finally getting to this one. And so this is a book I'm just like picking at a chapter here and there, basically. Another book, the same kind of thing, uh, Leaning into the Wind. Women Write from the Heart of the West, edited by Linda Hasselstrom, Gaydol Collar, and Nancy Curtis. I just started this book. I read um, another book, like a sequel to this, Woven in the Wind. I read that one and loved it. And so I um, purchased this one uh, back then, like over a year ago. <laughs> but this is like short stories, essays, poems. I feel like journal entries, uh, journals entries, all newspaper clippings, all sorts of things um, in here by many, many different women living in the West. So this is the kind of book that I wish, where did that, where'd that other one go? This one was, because uh, this is much more about, you know, living on the land and what is like the West landscape and weather and things like that, which I, I really do like. And for this one, I, I just started it last night. So I'm only, I don't know, like 30 pages in and I have a lot more to go. Um, and then the last, I was, I was doing this one, the last book I'm chipping away at because I have three of them because <laughs> I, I guess I need more than one book that's just gonna be, you know, sitting on my nightstand kind of thing. Uh, Bookworms, Great Writers and Readers Celebrate Reading by Laura Furman and Eleanor Standard. And this is all um, different people's, you know, take on reading. So you have reading aloud, um, sort different kinds of readers. And the chapter on among right now is the young reader. And for this one, I'm maybe like an eighth of the way in and I have a lot more to go. So these are the three books I am have on the go and will probably be on the go for the rest of the month just to not knock off um, books, you know, slowly. Because if I just read these dedicated to reading just like one of these, it would take me a long time because I just wouldn't want to pick it up and dedic you know, read it for hours on end. And so this is a good way for me to, you know, slowly make my way through them. And the book I'm focusing on is um there's no cover i just it's just uh i got it from a little free library but this is um earth her hearth in the snow by laura buchan and jerry allen and this is about um a couple who um the husband has grown up on the west but not in alaska and um this is back in the 50s and he decides oh wouldn't it be fun to, to live in alaska or or, or go visit <laughs> and so um, the wife agrees to go up there on a trip, a vacation, and they're like, oh, it's, they start in Juneau. And that was just going to be it. They're going to go to Juneau and then go back home. But um, he's like, I, I really like it here. And she's like, oh, okay. She's kind of more belong for the ride. And so they end up being teachers in the 1950s. And they get sent to the Bering Sea uh, near the Aleut Islands um, on, on the Bristol Bay area. And so way out <laughs> you know, in this tiny little village where... The food that they um, they have in their house, they get to order only once a year, <laughs> once a year, where these big shipments come in for everyone in the village. Otherwise, you're living on, you know, what you can catch or hunt. 
um, and you can't really grow many vegetables either. <laughs> so there's only like what, one person in the entire village who is able to have adapted it over the years to be able to have a little garden. Um, so it, it's quite interesting. Um, and I am, I, again, maybe like a fourth in. I started this yesterday, I think yesterday, the day before. So this is what I'm reading um, today, today and into Saturday. But yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to catch you up on, you know, how, how all this has been going. Oh, and so I have my little sticky note, the sticky note I've been keeping for the 100 book challenge and as of today I am at 65 books read or unhauled for this challenge so I'm more than halfway done now and my goal is to hit it by my birthday which is almost exactly a month from now so I'm, I'm doing good <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll keep you posted on how things go but anyway I hope everyone has a a nice weekend and I will talk to you soon thanks booktube